What's up guys, G-Man here, back again from OOT Gaming Central, bringing you another cast today between one of our very own, this is Zaki playing against Sappy91. Oh, this is going to be a very interesting game guys, these are two very high skilled players, both playing as Persians in the champion mode, so we are going to get to see all of those new strategies that are going to be done with that gear list mode, and what kind of build orders these players will be throwing down. I'm sorry that we didn't have many videos out over the last week. I was in Colorado uh, snowboarding, and that was a great time. But now that I'm back, I'm really getting to the champion mode. It's a blast. I really love what they've done with uh, this gearless mode, just allowing so many more players to play as well as being able to play with varied sieves and not feeling outgeared at all. I mean, I feel like I can just play against anyone with any sieve that I want, and that's really the direction that they should be taking the game in. Um, all that's left for them to do really is repopulate the game, and that is, I was reading about this on the forums, it looks like they do have a plan for that, uh, it's going to be coming after they release skirmish mode and maybe a couple more updates, and then they're going to start their marketing campaign, just trying to get the number of players up. Uh, to a point where PvP is very well occupied. So as we see right here, Zake has scouted out uh, Sappy's base, and that is going to prove very influential for him, as he is going to be able to see almost everything that goes down in the base of Sappy. And as we see right here, this is a map with water in the middle. Uh, I don't even think Zake noticed that at the beginning. It is kind of hard to tell sometimes what the maps are, especially with that low uh, line of sight on the scouts in champion mode. But we are going to see Zake probably wait until he hits that second age before he throws down the dock, which I also would recommend because that is the way that uh, the champion mode should be played at the moment. You want to wait until you hit that second age before you even get the dock down because the wood costs are just way too high, especially if you want to be throwing down any kind of fishing ships after that. Just uh, the timing works out much better if you throw down the dock once you're heading into or in that second age. So as we see right here, he will be forced into some kind of naval battle with Sappy, and because he is playing as the Persians, he's going to be forced to use the galleys, which are very, very weak, and have interesting hit detection compared to all of the other ships. Uh, they looks like they don't shoot very well, and it, if you move just a little bit with the galleys, that will allow you to dodge almost all of the damage, if not just most of the damage from any shot from another galley and as we see right here he is going to scout out that finished dock down in the bottom part of the map and we are going to see quite a bit of wood resources being thrown down here and while we are watching this video, I want to tell you guys that we have 64 signups for the tournament, which means I believe we are going to be closing off the signups at this point in time and starting the tournament within a one week or two. Uh, if you have signed up already, great job. You're in. There's not much else you need to do. Uh, we, I'm not quite sure what the rules will be finalized with. Uh, I know there will be some kind of prize, whether it be in-game or coin reward or um, actual money reward, but there will be some reward for you guys who win that tournament, and that tournament will be starting within a week or two, and I am very excited for that, guys. It is just the proving ground. These tournaments, it's a very necessary thing to have in a game like this, just to prove who is one of the better players, and as we see right here, Zake's score bar in the top left-hand corner is falling down a little bit lower than it should. Uh, it looks like he hasn't quite optimized his build order with the Persians yet, and he picks up right away again there. That was probably just the age-up difference, and that is going to be very, very bad. Actually, Sappy is in the Bronze Age, so it was just a cost of something huge there, and he is going to send out that first galley, and you see both of those docks sitting there ready to shoot out as many ships as they can, and he is going to pick off a couple of those fishing ships as right as the next galley comes out, and I've been seeing a lot of good players doing some very impressive micro in the water recently between mul uh, multiple fishing ships as well as having those galleys uh, moving back and forth. It really makes a difference in the water. I think the water plays a lot more like uh, other RTS games where every single hit can be dodged, basically, or at least miss most of the damage, and that will turn the uh, course of the battle very quickly if you are able to get off just a solid hit like we're seeing right here. Uh, just taking down one ship at a time is very, very important, keeping your DPS up between all of those, and as we see right here, Zake is outnumbered, but his micro back and forth is doing very, very well. 
And if he can just get a couple more solid hits on that right galley, it should be able to pick it off. And as we saw right there, what I was talking about, that kind of uh, unable to hit the galleys, just proving very, very uh, important in the water, as he is actually going to send his villager over to repair the galley. That's an interesting move. I haven't seen many people do that. Mostly you want to use a fishing ship for that, but I guess that is a good option to go with, as he does have four galleys right now, and we are going to see an almost purely water fight go down here, unless some hinky action goes down with some kind of military rush, but I doubt either player at the moment will have any kind of barracks, stables, or archery range to be able to throw down, as we see uh, four galleys with one more in production, as well as we look at his economy, he has just three villagers on food, as well as quite a few on wood and gold, which is what you need to do when you're getting into these galley wars like this. And Zake is doing a very good job of anticipating which uh, galleys they will be aiming for, and he's looking to move that one back and forth. Actually, both players are doing a very, very good job of that. Uh, I don't know how they're noticing where the galleys are going to be firing, but it is doing very well for both of them as it looks like Zake will lose his first galley, but he is going to be able to produce them right there and hopefully push away this little water raid that's going on. Both players are doing a very good job of keeping their score bars very high. Continued production of galleys and villagers back in the base. At this point in the match, uh, I would love to see some kind of military building being thrown down just to put on a little bit of pressure on the ground so it won't just turn into a purely water fight as that will turn the tide of the match very, very quickly if the economy of the other player suffers due to just a small raid. I mean, all you need is one stables or maybe even just a barracks and a couple of Asabaras or spearmen or something just sitting right in the wood line of your opponent being able to change everything about this match. As we see right here, it looks like there are... Uh, seven galleys for Zaki. That is a huge number. I have never seen this many in just one match at the beginning of it. And that is very good for him, although they still have not been able to take down many galleys. Just that micro back and forth is just proving immensely helpful to both players. As we see right here, uh, he did stop his production of villagers, but then quickly regained it once he noticed that that was gone on the side. And he does have quite a few villagers on wood and gold, something very, very important if you will be producing constant galleys. And guys, this is a huge amount of galleys that he has sitting in the middle of the water. And as we just saw right there, he just hit those economic upgrades. And I, I disagree with that quite a bit, actually. I think the one of the first First things you should be buying from your storehouses or in the earlier game is those economic upgrades because that 10% makes a huge difference especially the longer you have it will make all the difference as we are seeing superior micro from Zake right here as he looks like he was able to take down like four of Sappy's galleys and here we go he does throw down a couple of barracks and maybe even an archery range and that is going to prove instrumental in this match as he should be able to take down both of these docks very very quickly because they are not the docks are not able to micro back and forth as we see he will need to transfer over into some food producing uh, boats as that will allow him to ooh, actually a little proxy fight going on right there just trying to draw those boats around. Uh, off of Sappy's docks so he can produce more galleys, but if he does get uh, just a couple of fishing boats out on the water right here, his economy will explode and just prove uh, all that food will do very, very well for him as he finishes up Sappy's entire navy fleet, and he is going to send those galleys back down to the docks to try to finish up everything else that is down there. And as we see right here, he does have that barracks finally up, as well as the archery range, almost halfway completed. And these docks are going to fall almost instantly to this horde of galleys, but it looks like there are two stables already down. That is going to be very, very bad for Zake, unless he can start something very quickly here, as it looks like he is kind of screwed at the moment. Uh, there were quite a few uh, cavalry heading in from the side. And if that just gets a little bit on that gold line, there is not going to be much that he can do. Uh, hopefully that town center fire will be able to hold all of these off, but I doubt it, as he will try to get a couple more barracks down there and start transitioning over into the fishing ships to be able to continue the production of economic resources. But right here, he is going to be forced to move all of his villagers over onto that barracks. An interesting play as he will lose quite a few of them just in the process of trying to get that up a little bit faster. But right now, he has a couple of those spearmen out, and that will be able to defend his entire base very, very easily. Uh, the snare on those spearmen should be pretty good, and being able to hold 
those cavalry back will do very well for him. As we see right here, there are uh, just one bowman out, and uh, so far, playing as the Persians, I think the normal build order that most players are going to be doing is a bowman spam with either an Asabara or Sparabara, just because it it's just so well-rounded and very hard to counter. Uh, I prefer going with the cavalry myself just because they uh, are able to take down buildings just a little bit faster, and I think that is something that's very, very important for you to be able to do. And as we saw right there, a very good play for Zaki, trying to move all of his galleys around the water, just trying to make sure that if any docks try to get thrown up, he can shoot them down right away, or any kind of little raids that go on will get picked off if they are too close to the water. That is something that will cause your opponent to think a little bit more, just trying to have him focus. As we see, actually quite a few spearmen right now. I am very impressed by his army's numbers, as he is going to be house blocked and forced to throw up quite a few more houses. And he does have three barracks up right now, and as I predicted, quite a few fishing ships which will get him enough food to uh, continued complete production of spearmen and he will hit that upgrade for the docks as we are going to see this attack coming around the left side hitting very very soon in the base of sappy and he will gonna he's gonna start running out of food in his base soon but that's not that important because he can switch totally over to the water and I would really like for him to transition all those villagers onto something else as he has a huge surplus of food at the moment which it looks like he will do right now very good play as even though he does have that one berry bush off to the side uh, we do see his units are being attacked in the bottom left hand corner it was probably just a wolf and that is something that they need to relook at with champion mode uh, wolves were very well balanced when you had gear it was easy to uh, kill them and you didn't take much damage but now when uh, health levels are so much lower it's really hard to deal with the wolves I don't know if that is on purpose or if that's something that they uh, should look at I, I think it's a little bit annoying for that to be happening the wolves are very very powerful and can easily take out a one unit if you aren't watching it very well. And as we see right here, quite a huge raid coming in on both players' bases. But uh, I don't know how this is going to go for either player because uh, Zake is going to be forced to pull a lot of his villagers back into his town center and off of the production of resources. But if he just gets a couple of these spearmen into influential places and just gets those numbers correct, uh, trying to get two on one with those spearmen, he will do very, very well here as he is going to move those fishing boats around to more uh, piles of food in the ocean. And it looks like the raid down in Sabi's base was completely cleared out. I'm very surprised by that. Maybe he moved his units back and I just didn't see it. But that is, uh, qu this is intense production by both players right here. And it is going to be very interesting to see which player will gain the upper hand towards the latter end of the match. As we see, Zaki is transitioning over into some kind of stables play and heading into that 12 minute mark right now. I would like to see him hitting up into that third age just so you don't fall too far behind as well as hitting that armory upgrade as soon as he can. Just those little bit of advantages will make your units that much more cost effective. Uh, as we are going to see uh, Asabara coming out just trying to go after all of those bowmen that are hiding in the corner of the map. And... Uh, right now his food production is at an all-time high with all of those fishing boats hitting in the middle of the water. But as we look at the score bar right now, uh, not very good for Zaki. Very impressive that even with the water, he is still being out-resourced by his opponent. And as we saw with those, uh, with that one Asabara heading around the side of the map, uh, those the, uh, the boats were able to pick it off very, very easily, and that is something that you will have to watch for heading into these later games. As we see this little raid going on right here, it looks like, but uh, with you just pull a couple of galleys over and aim down on all these units, and there is not much that they can do. The galleys have quite a huge uh, DPS over an area, and that will do very, very well. And he, he, he is going to be able to pull over his fishing boat and repair things very, very quickly. As we are seeing... Quite a few units from Sappy. I'm very impressed here. He is sending them in little groups, which I don't necessarily agree with, but it is very impressive that he is able to produce so many units at once. And Asabaras versus Bowmen, not a fight that you want to be into unless you are microing very, very heavily because those Asabaras are able to tank most of the damage and that um, 
their high damage themselves will be able to take out most of the bowmen very, very quickly. And this is a very balanced army we are seeing here from Zake. Uh, lots of counters involved there, as well as being able to deal that range damage is very important, as he does finally hit that gold upgrade for us very late into this match. Okay, guys, sorry about that. My computer completely froze, so hopefully this splice works out fairly well. That was really weird. My computer's never done that before. So as we are going to see his units moving down this side of the map, that is a huge force, very well balanced, as I said earlier, and we are going to see the transfer of units over onto the next gold. That is a very uh, good play for him going on right there. I always seem to run out of gold and then struggle to move my units over and run out of gold in the process, uh, economic-wise. So that is something that you want to focus on. And speaking of gold, I was watching one of the Mista's recorded videos on his stream. And if that is something that you guys want to improve your game, I would highly recommend going checking out his stream. Uh, he posts on the forums quite a bit about where it is. It's, uh, I'm sure you can figure it out. We'll probably put a link in the description. But what he's been doing recently is incredible micro of his villagers. Uh, he is just making sure that they are the closest to the drop-off points that he can possibly have. And I've just been very impressed with that. Like, actually moving his villagers around in, like, just as close to the gold as he can possibly get them. As well as, even if a villager is, if they look close, he'll zoom in and then move them over just a little, little bit. And all those tiny advantages will prove, uh, it will make it almost impossible to be able to defeat him in uh, tournament play. Just because I don't, I've never seen anyone else do that in this game. And that is just a huge advantage. Even though it is just a couple of resources, every little bit counts, especially when it comes to timings and things like that. So if you guys really want to improve your game, I would highly recommend checking out his stream. We'll try to get more of his videos up on the channel. And also, uh, just microing your villagers, something that most players don't really focus that heavily on. They just let the game take care of it themselves, or itself, rather. But uh, I was just very impressed by how close he was moving his villagers. And luckily, Zake is going to be able to spot out a little raid coming up around the top right-hand corner and move all of his uh, cavalry up to that corner. As it looks like he's going to hide them behind the trees, pretending like Zake didn't see it, and then quickly move them over. Uh, good play here. I'm loving these little raids. Just uh, not very economically efficient at the moment, but is pretty good if you catch him off guard. Uh, as we see right here, he is going to have to pull this galley away from the side of the water and force that uh, army to be brought down very, very quickly. As we will see that galley with very low health, and that fishing boat repairing, that is just very good domination of the water at the moment. And we are still not in that third age, but Sake has reached the, sil or Sappy, rather, has reached the Silver Age. And that is going to prove a huge difference because of those upgrades that you can get, as well as the counter units that you're able to produce, will turn the tide of the battle very, very quickly. I know the third age is very powerful as the Persians, and even if you aren't producing immortals, uh, that special third age unit for the Persians, everything else is very, very good, especially if you're going for counters. So as we see right here, he has not quite reached that full population mark, but he is going to spot out this little proxy stable along the side right here, and that is how those raids have been being produced. That is a very good pickup for Zaki right there. Fairly good scouting picking that out, and he will be able to uh, pick off most of those stables, if not all of them, before any units are able to come up there and reinforce. As we see right here, I this is why I like those Asabaras, because they are able to take down... Ooh, wow, interesting play going on right here, as I'll finish up my thought. They are able to take down buildings very, very quickly, as he is going to try to hit into that third age, as well as my other train of thought. He is using the water to trade. Uh, I like that a lot, because the, the ground merchant units... Are, they have horrible collision detection, and they do not produce much gold, but because he is completely defended on the water, I think that's probably one of the smartest plays I've ever seen. Uh, most players don't really use the water to trade back and forth that much, because you can't get that optimum of a distance, but I'm really liking what he's doing here. As we are seeing that third age uh, about... Or it hasn't even started yet. He doesn't even realize he has villagers in queue trying to produce those. And he will see this huge attack coming along the side of the map. And so far in this match, Zake has done a very good job of decreasing the gap in score between himself and Sappy. And 
I am really favoring Zake at this point just because of the complete water control that he has and this composition of the army, although because Seppi is in third age, it will mean that this fight should go his way as we are almost to the 20 minute mark in this game. Actually, it looks like we did already hit it, and that is huge, guys. If you hit to that 20-minute mark, the game just radically changes and adds so much more depth. And it looks like he's uh, Zaki is doing quite an interesting move here. It looks like he was trying to do a raid around, but he actually split his units up, and I don't really agree with this. He's trying to cut off all reinforcements, but is going to lose the bulk of his forces just because he isn't able to tank much damage in the front. And uh, hopefully these Asabaras will move back eventually. Actually, he's just going for a full frontal attack here. And hopefully his reinforcements in the back are able to hold off anything that is left. As we see, he has huge amounts of resources right now. The food is just skyrocketing. I would like to see a couple more villagers transferred. Wow, that is huge. A couple more villagers transferred over onto stone so we can make more town centers as he hits that third age. But he just did a very impressive raid into the base of Sappy. That is going to destroy almost all military production that he has due to gold. Even though he is splitting his units up very, uh, not very well here in Sappy's base, but he has quite a huge attack to deal with on his home front. As we see, he does have, uh, I, I don't see this ending well for him right now at the moment. Uh, there are quite a few attacks going on at once, but there are just so many units in Zake's base. Unless he can do something drastic here, uh, Sappy is just going to be able to pull off all the sp uh, Asabaras and take down buildings as well as use those bowmen to just make sure nothing gets near the Asabaras. Even though this water control has been very good so far, uh, Sappy has proved that you really don't need the water control to last very far into the game, especially if you are being able to macro out as many units as he is right now. He just has a couple more units on wood, or on stone rather. Hopefully that production goes up drastically. As we see, there are quite a few units sitting off to the side of the map, and Zake is being forced to move down the left side of the map. Uh, very good play for him right there. I would have liked to see upgrades from all of his units coming out much earlier in this match. I'm a little disappointed right now. Uh, everything from storehouse upgrades to armory upgrades to anything that is in the either the barracks or the stables or the archery ranges. That just really, I think that's what's making the difference in this game right here. As Sappy is sending up another huge force straight into the base of Zake. Uh, wow, I, I'm very impressed with Sappy so far in this match. He is going to be a force to contend with in the OOT tournament. As it looks like right here, there are just way too many units reinforcing into the base of Zake to really do anything. Uh, well, to allow Zake to do anything, I would like to see uh, Sappy focus down on more things, uh, more like buildings or key military production facilities that you see Zake using, as well as maybe even going after that town center just to get that timer going so Zake is forced to kind of freak out a little bit. And it looks like right here Zake might be able to pull out of this alive, but it's just so many units in his base and this little force coming up from the side is going to do very well here as they will be able to swoop around and take down those low HP, low uh, shielding uh, bowmen. As we will see, continued production onto stone, trying to get up that next town center to increase that population limit as well as forcing his... Oh my gosh, Sappy is playing this game so well, guys. This is very impressive play. All of these raids going on at once are forcing Zake into such a defensive position that he is really not able to do much except for on the water. Uh, he really went that pure water build as we saw, and it is costing him later into the game, even though you would think it'd help out a little bit. Just having so many units on the water have slowed down his earlier game and have allowed Sappy to take some map control, although I don't even even know if you can call it map control. It's just the Zake base control that he's having trouble with as we are going to see a large transfer of villagers up to the top of his base. Hopefully he gets more villagers on gold at the moment. Uh, just having those merchant transports is not enough, although all those Asabaras are very, uh, they're a very impressive force, but just a couple of their uh, antis, either spearmen or those third age cavalry, will do very, very well against them. But it looks like Zake is transitioning into those third age units finally, as we are going to see a large movement down to the right side. 
and at the moment Zake only has 37 villagers that is a very very low number he is focusing most of his population on military and I don't know if that's such a great idea he really needs to get that economic front going at the moment even though uh, Sappy is doing quite the job of putting on quite a bit of pressure I think the economic front of this is going to prove disastrous for Zake with only 37 villagers as we see multiple battles going down with Sappy right now, uh, that galley is going to do very, very well. Just that area damage will uh, just destroy all of those bowmen hiding in the back. But Zake is doing quite the job of keeping up his unit production, as well as just taking advantage of the water while he can. Uh, I would like to see some kind of docks thrown down by Sappy at the moment, just because it'd be so easy to throw out a couple of ram, sh ram ships and just plow through everything in the water. Uh, once you hit that third age, all those second age ships in the water are basically useless. They're just so weak against every kind of ram ship there is. Actually, it's only one kind of ram ship, but weak against a large group of ram ships. But it looks like Zake has been able to take out all of the gold production of Sappy. And even though that score bar, I guess it's closing up a little bit, but still Zake is quite far behind. And he is forced to just sit around and hope for the best at the moment, try to produce more villagers. He is up to 39, not quite as high as I would like to see him. But he does have two fairly large forces on each side of the map. And I am wondering at this point in the match if we are going to get to see a fourth age. I don't think I've seen many Persian PvP videos ever go to fourth age. And I'm a little bit excited for that, guys. Cataracts and everything from uh, just all those upgrades to those units being so strong and being able to macro out so many. But it looks like this raid will go down very, very well here. As, oh, never mind, I take that back. Uh, Sappy is not doing a very good front on upgrading his units to, or changing over into the third age units, as it looks like uh, Zake is going to be able to plow through everything down here. And that is something that I have noticed in PvP matches playing as Persia. I have not really felt the need to uh, change over into third age units that much. Uh, second age is just, the units feel so powerful. Uh, just the bowmen combination with Asabaras are just so good. I don't know. That might need to be something that's looked at. I know Microsoft Business Plan will allow that for, to happen. Right as the Celts come out, expect a nerf to the Persians, guys. It's just how this game is going to play. Uh, they're just trying to sell their uh, their sieves. It's, it's a common business plan. But uh, we are going to see the Persians probably end up a little bit weaker than they are right now. So this is the golden time to play as Persians, guys. Get ready for them. Practice against them because in the tournament, you're going to be seeing a lot of the higher level players playing as Persians as we are at that 27-minute mark. And this game will be wrapping up fairly soon. Uh, at this point, I really think it's just going to be because of Zaki's lack of resources, although his huge force that he has gathered right now, those are a lot of, of mounted archers. Uh, I don't know if those are going to be able to do much. I know uh, Bubble really likes those units. I have not grown that fond of them, but hopefully they will be able to hit quite a bit of damage in the base of Sappy, and if he gets them upgraded just a little bit, that will do very well for him. As we see that the villager count is up to 48. I would like it to be around 50, 55. Uh, maybe because he has... Wow, that's an interesting gold placement. Maybe because he has just a couple of those units in the water. He doesn't need his villager count up that much higher. Uh, but that gold placement up there is just so weird. Wow. Look at this. So Sappy does have a huge force to contend with right here. But because of all those mounted archers, he will... Uh, Zake will be able to plow through all of the Asabaras for Sappy, as we are seeing that most of the food has run out in the water, and that means that Zake is going to have to transition over into more farms, as we see a large attack heading up the right side of the map right here, right into the base of Zake. Uh, hopefully he can pull off his units quickly enough to defend against this, but I am not seeing this ending well for... Zake at the moment. I know I've been switching back and forth all game. This has been a great game, guys. I am very I am very glad we got to cast this today because the changes back and forth, I have not been able to choose one player who will win. This really does show uh, that you can pull back at the end of games like this. I know uh, usually when I play, if I just lose a couple of units, I get angry. And if I don't see any chance of me winning 
or at least a large chance of me winning. I just quit out of the game. But this really is giving me hope that you can recover from uh, large attacks like this and being down so much in the score. Uh, hopefully, it will turn around in the end for Zake. But maybe uh, it would be interesting to see Sappy win this because I have not seen many players able to completely defend against a complete water takeover at the beginning of the match. So as we are seeing right here, the score bar is still quite low, which means Sappy's economic and military prowess is going to prove fairly disastrous for Zake at the moment. Hopefully, he'll be able to pull these fishing boats off and continue fishing. Uh, he has... Uh, 20 units on food right now, but I don't think that's going to be enough production to keep up against this huge force that's heading in right here. Wow, look at all those Asabaras. That is going to be powerful. He just needs to get a little bit in farther and just start... Uh, that spread is fairly good on those units. Maybe the galleys will be able to turn the tide a little bit, but it looks like Sappy will pull out of this ahead. Uh, hard to tell at the moment. Both these units just look so similar. And hopefully, Zake might be able to pull out of this, but I think Sappy is going to just be able to macro his way to a victory. Uh, just so many units on the side of the map. There's not much that he could do. So as we go back and think about this match in reflection, what? Well, it's just been a great match, guys. I'm very impressed with the level of talent that has been shown in this match. Uh, taking over the water, yet still losing. Very interesting play right there. If you do lose the water, it is important to do that quick raid right away to make sure that you can take ground control as well as just making sure that your production is up all the way. Persians, we have seen the main units that you're going to be using. I don't think many players will use the Immortals. I think it's just going to be an Asabara, Bowmen, Fest, switching over into Mounted Archers. I don't think we are going to see much variety than that. Um, thanks for watching the video today, guys. Make sure to leave a comment, subscribe, everything you want to do. We're going to have more videos up, and that tournament will be coming soon. As we see that War Wagon for Sappy, I have not seen many of those used at all. Uh, you know, guys, if you're having a great time playing this game, tell your friends about it. I just love to see more population going down. And there you go, the resign from Zaki as he sees that fort. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I'll see you later.